Good morning. How are you? Oh, Monday morning. Oh, everybody's racing to get in front of this lorry, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to have to just join the end of the queue. Yes, well. Oh dear me, what a scorcher yesterday. Monday morning, or as my wife would say, Monday morning. Yeah, we uh, went kart racing yesterday at Buckmore Park, which was it's a kart racing circuit and quite, I wouldn't say it's basic. I mean, basically the their customer service is pretty poor. They've got a cafeteria there and the facilities are sort of quite modern and everything. But uh, they're, you know, it's, it's just a bit of fun, you know. And we had a corporate day, we took the practice out. So all the nurses, receptionists, etc. And uh, sort of friends and family, mainly family. And it was a three hour race. And uh, so uh, the, you have to do five driver changes. So we did six drivers who had half an hour each. So I did, I think I did about 28 minutes. It's very, very, it's a bit more physically demanding than I thought it was going to be, you know? So everyone thinks it's going to be like Mario Kart. And uh, it's, <laughs> there are two things that are physically demanding. One is the steering, because there is absolutely no power steering on these things. And they're not very lightly balanced, you know? They are set up to be quite, how can I put it? If you let go of the wheel, I think they're supposed to sort of center. The wheel is, is quite a lot of trailing uh, edge on the steering. so. Uh, they centre themselves up, which means that to uncentre them is actually quite physically demanding. And uh, they've got these tiny, tiny steering wheels, which again, I don't really understand why the steering wheels are so tiny, but I needed a big steering wheel, you know, like they have on a ship, <laughs> with knobs on the end so that I could pull it. And then the other uh, thing is just the lateral forces on your body, you know, you're just you're literally thrown to the left, thrown to the right, thrown to the right, thrown to the left, thrown to the right. And you're thrown uh, every five seconds or less, you are thrown one way or the other because a, cir a circuit is about a minute and uh, there's probably 12 bends in a circuit, so on average, so. So, you know, you can, you can, <laughs> you can sort of try and lean into the turns, which helps, but, uh, occasionally you know you'll just get caught and, and just your head just goes out of the turn like that and then it's and it's you know you're it's two or three G I'm sure so you you find it quite difficult to get yourself back in shape again or, or I'm just old or I, you know I mean these young guys wouldn't be saying any of this so karting as a uh, way of uh, taking your staff out you know is a good is a good thing it was very hot yesterday and we were in the sun pretty much all day and so I think we've all got a bit of sunstroke. I've got a bit of a headache this morning. I shall be taking some uh, painkillers when I get to work, I'd imagine. Although, and, and take loads, and, well, I mean on a hot day, we, we should, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll take some water. I'm going to take a bottle of water. I think it's going to be hot. I mean, and in the end, well, I must have drunk about six bottles of water. But then you are in a racing suit, which is extremely hot, you know. So, what else? Oh, that woman with a 10-year-old who had an abscess didn't turn up. Can you believe it? I mean, you won't believe it when I tell you this is an absolute example of uh, how the patients drive us all mad. I'm, I'm amazed we're not all in a loony bin by the time we're 60. She left a message on the answer phone, on the voicemail at 8.22. This is for an 8.45 appointment. And it was so quiet and so indistinct, I couldn't hear it. I had to go out into the car park because the kettle was drowning it out. And then, and then even then I couldn't hear it. It was just so, I don't know she, what was wrong with her voice anyway. 
So anyway, I got the gist of it. There was that she wasn't coming in, you know. So which is fair enough. So I went back in and I said to uh, our receptionist, "What are we going to do about?" You know, because she's not a patient of ours. She's a patient of another dentist. She, normally, we we make a charge. the The idea of the discharge, of, as I said in the past, is a deterrent. We don't propose to collect it. We're certainly not going to collect a charge off a ten-year-old. But on the other hand, I just don't want her to think that you know she can do this sort of thing without any penalty at all. Because according to the receptionist, she'd been very pushy about booking the child in very pushy about making sure that when they did come in that I was going to take the tooth out even though I'd never seen the child or the tooth and um, you know um, and then you know just to cancel and uh, so we decided that we, we put like a 25 pound charge on which is just like a nominal charge it's probably along the lines of what we would have charged her anyway but uh, so we put a £25 charge on and then I sent her an SMS saying, uh, you know, just to let you know that in consideration of you not uh, cancelling a short notice this morning, a £25 charge has been applied to your account. Not that we're going to send the bailiffs around or anything, but, you know, normally patients say, oh, well, you know, I'm not going back there again, so that doesn't really matter. And that's the whole point. I mean, it was really only in case she decided that she was going to come back in again, you know, in case she rang up at two o'clock and said, no, little, uh, uh, you know, my little fairy is in so much pain, I'm I'm going to take her out of school and bring her in or whatever. In which case we would have said, yeah, well, fair enough, but you've got to settle the 25 quid for the last time you didn't turn up. So, we never collect these charges. You know, you, know, you just physically can't get them. And we don't want them. We want the patient not to come back. So anyway, she rang up in a high dudgeon. And what she said was, it was staggered even me. It staggered even me. She said that the reason that she'd cancelled was because the receptionist had been unable to give her an accurate idea of what the cost was going to be. And that it was therefore our fault that she'd cancelled. And that was running out of petrol so I said to her no that is quite right we are she's in a, under instructions not to give a firm quotation over the phone for patients that we haven't seen and uh, and don't know what the work involves the work and I said to her it's like it's like ringing up a garage and asking how much it costs to fix your car when they haven't seen the car and they don't know what's wrong with it so, like most people who are who lose an argument, they don't. Nobody ever says, "Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I see your point there. You're quite right. Yeah, okay, right, fair enough." They just move on, don't they? They just go, "Oh, and another thing, and another thing," as though they've won the point even when they've lost the point, right? And in fact, she had been given an indication because she told me that she'd rung up her old practice and asked how much. It cost to have a tooth out, and they told her probably in the order of about thirty pounds. So she'd had like an estimate. Well, but what she hadn't had was a quotation from us, and she wasn't going to get one because the way it works is you bring the child in, we agree or don't agree as to what needs to be done. You ask how much it's going to be, we tell you, and then if you don't like it, then you you take the child away. No harm, no foul, no charge for the checkup or any x-rays or anything but you then we then give you a quote and if you don't you know if you think you can get a cheaper quote elsewhere then you go elsewhere it's, that, it's as simple as that but anyway the, the next thing she said well again was like I, I, in a way it's just sort of almost builds on the first one because she took it one step further and she said that uh, she couldn't understand why we charged her for not turning up. And I said, well, why do, why, you know, we always charge people for not cancelling. And she said, well, I, but I made the appointment within the 24 hours, that, which is your cancellation period. So I said, that's right. She said, so 
So there's no way that I could possibly have cancelled without getting charged. And I said, yes, that is also correct. If you make an appointment within the cancellation period, there is no way you can cancel it without getting charged. And she said, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> she says, I made my appointment like at four o'clock yesterday afternoon. She said, and that appointment was free at that point. So I said, yes. And she said, and I canceled before you opened this morning. So you're not telling me that you could have fit someone else in and therefore I prevented another patient coming in. She said it was either it was either me and little fairy or no one. Therefore no loss, no loss because you had no patient. You could have had no patient. I was just taking up your time. <clears throat> I just I just booked your time and I didn't use it. Time time that you couldn't have filled anyway. You couldn't have made any money on anyway. So why are you charging me? I mean, quite ingenious, really, as an argument, but doesn't work because our terms and conditions quite clearly state if you reserve time and then unreserve it within 24 hours, you pay. And that's because there's a, a penalty. It's a, it's a penalty to deter people from reserving time at less than 24 hours notice and then cancelling it. Otherwise, every bugger would be saying, oh, I'd like to make an appointment at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon in case I feel like coming in. You can't do that. So you, you, you reserve the time, you cancel, you pay. But no, she's got this ingenious argument that, and this is based on her experience, apparently, where uh, they, she works in a, a health-related industry where they, they have patients and uh, they have to come in and set up at uh, you know for nine o'clock even if they don't have a nine o'clock patient so she, basically she was also arguing that my costs were sunk costs that my staff were employed from 8:45 in any case so so my costs were not any higher so not only there was did I have no opportunity cost but I had no uh, in, increase in fixed costs as a result of her making this appointment. So, I mean, by this time I was getting a bit tired because she's she's obviously put a lot of thought into this 25 quid, far more than I have. And seeing as we don't intend to chase it anyway, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and get 25 quid out of a 10 year old for not turning up. She's got enough problems having parents like that without them <laughs> chasing them for money. So. I said, look, I said, we're not going to chase this up, so fine, goodbye, you know, that's it, goodbye. They'll never darken my doorstep again. And uh, that we agreed to part on those terms. But I thought I'd let you know <clears throat> what her arguments were, because I think they were quite ingenious. And they fail, uh, certainly the, uh, certainly they fail on, you know, the, the argument that you should be entitled to a quotation over the phone. Uh, rather than um, you know rather than just turning up and accepting I mean she thought that you know we would do it and then we might turn around and say it's 500 pounds which is which is quite frankly dumb um, because it, where there is no in law where there is no fee agreed in advance the fee has to be reasonable like you know if you say to uh, if you go up to an ice cream vendor and you say I like a 99 with a flake <laughs> and he hasn't got his prices posted uh, he can't turn around and say to you thank you very much here's your ice cream and as soon as you've licked it say that's 75 quid they can't do that the law does not support them doing that the law says that in where no where there's been an offer and an acceptance which are the two of the three things required for a contract uh, he's offering an ice cream, or I, off, I offered to buy an ice cream, he's offered to supply one, but the consideration, which is the price for the contract, hasn't been agreed, that it, where there's no agreement on consideration, it must be reasonable, and the court will decide what is reasonable. So, you know, you can say to him, well, no, I'm, I'm going to give you two quid, because two quid is what is reasonable for an ice cream. And he can't demand 75 quid. Or if he takes you to court for 75 quid, he's not gonna get it. And it's the same with uh, 
teeth. If someone comes in and it, it, it doesn't even work like that because I mean obviously you can agree on the consideration can't you beforehand. Uh, at the very worst case scenario the patient's going to say no that's I think that's too expensive I could get that cheaper elsewhere or I can't afford that and they will then be able to take your offer away you know they don't have to have the treatment done the the consideration is negotiated in advance of the provision of the service so uh, and it's highly likely that what she, you know she would have agreed whatever fee because we don't really overcharge 10 year olds not as I say, we take the attitude that if you're if you're unlucky enough to have a parent that's given you so much decay that you need to have your teeth extracted by strangers aged 10, that you're you've you've suffered enough in life. You don't need to you don't need a poor parent. You've already got a stupid parent. You don't need a stupid poor parent. Although, in my experience, stupid people are tend to be poor. And that may have been part of the problem. I mean, well, I think we probably could have perhaps given her a better indication of what the fee was. But I don't think any of us realised how paranoid she was, and certainly we couldn't have given her a quotation, which is what she wanted. So that's problem one. And then problem two is obviously the cost, the opportunity cost of the appointment that she reserved. And I think in many ways that's much more clear cut. Although it doesn't, she seems to think that she's found a loophole. First of all, our terms and conditions state that that's. The, the terms on, on which you book the appointment is that if you cancel at less than 24 hours notice you get charged. End of. Conditions, terms and conditions accepted by booking, therefore no, no real argument. But um, her, her sort of secondary argument that there, there was no loss was, in, was is not true because obviously we lost the opportunity to book someone else in at 8.45. And although you, you might say, well, yeah, but did you really? I mean, really, I mean, what's, and this was her argument, what was the chances of that? Um, in fact, we have frequently, we frequently take a point, uh, phone calls in the evening. In fact, if you ring my surgery number out of hours, you will get through to me. And I will, my stock response to anybody who rings out of hours, who, who has got a problem, is come in first thing tomorrow morning. And if, if we're booked, if necessary, wait. Uh, so, um, although um, although we didn't lose, uh, how can I put it? Although we didn't have a patient that lost the opportunity to come in at that time, we lost the opportunity to book a patient in at that time, and that's what the charge is for. And I think the charge was eminently reasonable, considering the amount of surgery time she took up, certainly the amount of stress she caused me. Because these patients, they great on you, you know. They, uh, your, this is all, this is part of the stress of the job. Your, I was go-karting yesterday and I thought about this at least once. And that is one more time than I should have thought about it yesterday, honestly. It's this stupid, stupid woman who's, you know, came in, created chaos, just shedding chaos all over the place. Uh, like a wet dog sheds water and mud and probably does throughout her entire life. Uh, she's, she's probably given everybody else as much grief as she is me. And, um, and there are some people like that, you know? There are, my wife used to work for a dentist and every time she came home, she said, oh, you'll never guess what happened today. You'll never guess, you'll never guess what he's done now. You'll never guess what he's done now. And after a while, you know, of giving her a chance to decompress herself over the stress, of her working for him, I said to her, look, this guy is just goes through life making problems for everybody. And I said, and he's making a problem for me now because I'm having to spend half an hour a day listening to how stupid he is. And I said, okay, I've got it, I've got it. He's a complete dick. Uh, so I am not, let's not mention him ever again. You know, and that's the only thing you can do with people like that. You have got to sort of try and get rid of them. That's why we, we get rid of so many of our patients. But because we're doing this emergency cover, and, and it's not really emergency cover, it's people think that the service is going to carry on. We're actually just carrying on their service. We're not, they don't understand, they don't think they've been told that we're there just really to get, get them out of pain and, and uh, deal with any swelling or loss of uh, ability to breathe. 
No, they think that uh, anything that was due to be done in the two weeks that this surgery is shut will be done by us as their agent. And it, it don't work like that. So what we're doing is we're taking on a ton of their uh, stressful patients because they do they do have stressful patients they don't turn them away like we do my, my patients are lovely they are and if they're not lovely they don't they're not my patients do you know what I mean that my view of dentistry is that I quite enjoy going to work because I'm going to see do a load of lovely work with a load of lovely staff on a load of lovely patients and I just don't need the stress honestly I don't and so covering for this other surgery has been a bit of an eye-opener because almost every patient that has come from there has been certifiably insane and I don't know how he does it honestly I don't so my advice to him would be would be to, <laughs> to have a cull of his patients to get rid of the mad the mad ones the ones who think that their dentistry is being dictated by God uh, the ones who think that the laws, the rules don't apply to them, uh, and you, you can, uh, you know, you can get sucked into the lives of other people by, you know, by sort of through a third party, constantly telling you what this so and so has done, this so and so has done that. I'm like, fine, I know not to have any dealings with so and so. Now, okay, can we stop talking about him? Because my life is ticking away and hearing what a dick he is, he's not really, I don't want that to form any part of my life. <laughs> so, anyway, I normally give you a weather report. It's a cloudy, high white cloud. Thunderstorms, possibly, because we've had a lot of hot weather. A lot of water has been sucked up into the atmosphere. A lot of water has sucked out of me yesterday, I tell you. Wow. Six bottles of water. But good fun, carting. And uh, I, th I don't know what the next uh, staff event is. I think we're all going to get on a coach and go and, see, go and see a West End musical. So that'll be good fun. But, and it cost about, well, it cost about 300 quid for the carting. And that was that means that was more than it should do because basically the um, that included like quite a hefty donation to the charity that was running it and uh, and and then I took them all out for dinner afterwards in a pub with a nice pub garden and that was that was about another hundred so all in all you know. 400 quid well spent. Now they're like their team, they're tight like this, they're tight. We have a tight team. I hope you've got a tight team. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.